Hi everyone, my name is Diane. So today I'll be cooking rabia. And in, in pidgin we say sak sak, say go. So three ingredients you need to make rabias. Banana, which we got from the market. We have sago from Gulf Province, where I'm married. And coconut, so three ingredients we need to do rabia. So first, I'm going to get the ripe bananas and then put them in the pot, boil them, and then have the sago in. So we'll start with the bananas. I'll just peel the bananas. Make sure you get ripe bananas. The riper it is, the sweeter the rabia or saksak is. Some people prepare them like straight onto the pot, but I prefer to have them sliced through like that, so it cooks evenly and faster. They're ripe, so the skin just comes off. Okay, the number of um, bananas you're using depends on how many people you're feeding. If you have a big family, you cook a lot of bananas. But if you are feeding for a small family or just your friends, two or three friends, just one bunch would do. Okay, so I'm just going to peel a few more, probably three more, and then I can have the bananas boiled. Okay, so I've done my bananas now, they're in the pot. I'm gonna get some water and fill the pot up halfway. Get some water. So if you need more water, um, you can get some more water. Um, usually the water is halfway of where the pot is. Just so the water covers all the bananas in the pot. We'll now boil the bananas. Right? Just get the pot lid. Okay, we have our banana in the pot now boiling. That we'll leave it for 10, 15 minutes and then we'll add our sago onto the banana pot. You might relate to this dish as the pariwa, but that's not what I'm cooking. It's totally a different dish, but with the same ingredients, banana and sago and coconut. So stick around and wait for the final product. Meanwhile, I have to prepare the coconut, get it ready. So I'm gonna hand this over to my sister-in-law, Sibo, who's gonna have it scraped. And then we will go with the sago now. I just pour the sago into the bowl. Just enough for the pot of banana I'm preparing, not too much. But it depends on how many people you are feeding. If you have a big family, you can use the whole pot. They sell this for just five kina, I think, at the market. So you can get them at the market. There's different colors to the sago. There's some white ones, some really dark brown, and the lighter brown ones. Okay, I have my sago in the bowl now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to break them down because some sagos have lumps where I need to just 
shred them down or you just just with your fingertips just breaking down the bigger lumps so it should turn out like a fine sago so easy to sprinkle into the banana pot that's boiling okay so I've, I'm done with the sago now we will have to check the pot now as I can see it's boiling so we'll check our bananas now to see if they have been finally cooked we may give another two minutes for the bananas to boil and then we can add our sago into the pot okay, we'll check now if the bananas are ready Yep, looks like it's ready. So we'll take them out now. What you need to do is just bring your pot over and then we will have to smash the bananas. I'm using this. Um, some people, well, the older village ladies have the coconut um, the wood they use some use plastic containers to smash this so once I have this smashed all the ripe banana smashed then we can start adding our sago into the pot You will notice um, the water, the boiled water has dissolved into the banana. So you might, if you need more hot water, just boil the jug. Have some hot water boiled and you can add it on with the sago. I think we are done here. Okay, so I've smashed the bananas, but during the while the banana was boiling, um, usually the water is soaked up by the banana and if you need more water, you can add more water onto, into the pot to make it more watery. Okay, my banana is ready now. I'm going to have it placed back onto the stove to have it boil. While it's boiling, I'll have to sprinkle the sago into the pot. Let's get the lid. Okay, we will give um, just five minutes to have it boil and then we can place our sago into the pot. Now we will add our sago into the pot. So I'll do that now. So while the banana is boiling, you will need to stir the sago in while sprinkling it. So the sago cooks with the mashed banana. Okay, our rabia is ready now. So I'll head over to the stove and bring it to the bench to have it plated up. Okay. So. It 
depending on whoever is eating this, you can serve as much as possible or a little. Just a little bit more. There we go. Okay. okay, so I have my rabia in the plate now. Um, I'll have to squeeze the coconut, so I'm going to call up my tambu sibo. She's going to help me. Okay. So. Mostly the squeezing of coconut is done by the woman, but some men do. My husband doesn't. Just saying. So, squeezing a bit. Should be enough. There you have it. Thank you. So, this is our rabia. And thank you, Sibo. For helping. Okay, um, most people like to have it with um, fried fish, pork, even bully beef or just greens or you can have it just like this. But I'd prefer um, boiled or steamed fish but I have a boiled fish here so I'm just going to add some garnish over it some spring onions and some lemons you can sprinkle your lemons over the fish so there you have it my version of rabia or sago or saksak in pidgin and boil simple boiled fish um, you can have it with anything you want but that's how I like it and I hope you like my cooking and we'll see you next time. My name is John Bosco Toboeta. I'm from Kirwina Island in Milimbe province. I just want to share with you on how we grow up this yam. This is our culture, and the seeds are brought all the way from Kirwina Island, brought to here in Mosby. <coughs> Currently, I'm growing it in Tete, beside my residence. This uh, yam, it's our staple food on the island of Kirwina. We grow it for mainly cultural activities, not much of uh, selling it for bright price purposes. And our feastings, we use this uh, food. We have uh, different species of yams. We have, uh, uh, like this one here is mami. Uh, for, the, for this uh, ground here, I've been using it for the last uh, three years. This is the third year now I'm using it, replanting. Plant the yams and then harvest them, and then now uh, plant them again using the same land. Oh, okay. Because I, uh, in Mosby, I have no other land to go. Uh, this is the only ground I found, so I'm using it over and over. Maybe in the next year, I'll try my best to find some other land where I can take the species out and go and plant them and grow them again. Every year is different from the other year. The much that I planted this year will weigh like uh, 5,000. If I have to sell this whole garden, it will weigh around 5,000. But then my culture does not allow me to sell it out, so it's for our cultural activities. 
and uh, the other part of it, I channel these yams only to those I think they deserve to, especially my father or my sisters and my aunties. It best uh, say how big the seed I plant. It best a minimum it can be is five. The maximum one of the mummy can be is 30 pieces. Not all big and not all small. Let's say maybe five or six big, very big ones and uh, smaller ones. Because when the, when the mummy bears, it divides itself inside, some for seed and some for eating. My recent harvest, my first harvest, this is a different species. This species looks like the sipic yams they grow. We do have on the island. I brought it all, brought this seed all the way from Kirwin Island. I have more than one, this is one of them. The big, biggest one was sent to my small daddy at Five Mile. I think the boys are dressing it. If we have time to go around there, we can get, capture it. Otherwise, then uh, this is one of them, and some are still in the garden, yet to be removed. For the mummies, I'm waiting for the leaves. Maybe in the next uh, month or so, the leaves dried up, then I will start, start uh, removing them. So how do you know that it's ready? I depending on the leaves. When the leaves dried up, it shows me that I am underneath is ready. And then I'll start removing them. We don't allow the yam leaf to be on the ground because the outcome of it depending on the leaves. So we have to look after the leaves. So we make sure we put enough yam sticks so the yam can grow up and then it can be a good food. Planting yam is a skill, I should say. Only those who are brought up with the yam would know how to plant it. Like I'm one of them, I, I was brought up with this food on the island. I started planting the yam when I was small, started learning. It's just like anything else, you learn to do it, you get to know how to do it. And by now at this uh, age, I should say that uh, I'm a specialist in planting yams, and I grow good uh, yams and harvest very good uh, products out of it. Estimated two meters long yam, still in the ground yet to be harvested, waiting for it. The yams in the garden are different species. This is one of it. The seeds are coming out on the rope, and the food itself for eating is still there. The leaf you can see is different from the others. And the food is a purple, this is a purple yam. Some are getting ready like this one. Well, the leaves are already dried, ready for harvesting. Lots of species. Not all these species are from Kirwin Island. We collect them. Like this one here, this species is from uh, Morobe. I don't really know which part of Morobe, but some of our relatives went to Morobe and brought this species, and we grow it like we own it. We have our Kirwin traditional species, but then some are from other parts of the country. They also grow yams like uh, sipik. And uh, I have a sipik species, this one here. And uh, this is for, uh, more of a species. Otherwise, the majority of the yams in the garden are from Kiruna. If you are interested in uh, growing yam, don't hesitate to come and uh, see me. I can uh, give you a seed and you go and never try. Or I can show you how to plant it and let the uh, season goes and then you grow it in the next season for yourself. Welcome back.
back to the show now if you just joined us you're watching house and home and we are still outdoors so today on color story we caught up with a metal fabricator So I'm here at Five Mile where he sells his stuff, his portable oven, his portable grill and barbecue plate. Now if you're someone out there who wants to cook outdoors and are looking for this, you can come down to Five Mile here in Port Mosby. Now here's where he sells his stuff. Now would it be interesting to know what these cooking stands are made up of? This time, we went up to the place where these cooking stands are made. Apo! Give me go. They blow me and come on a James my boy. And uh, me on the metal fabricator. Start long we line them all the same thing and was um me in the school one plus school too. We no go no walking or me no walking balls like kind of walk that's so me lining through law power blow me la Lily Papa and come blind him uh school man. Come now, how I'm stop Louis yeah, was um stop middle stuff one day walk low. Walk walk more to like walk go now. And we play walk low look at blame go now, come in look at a line was here. Line him less line, I mean stop now, so I mean walk more lily walk or some and now you blow look in the stuff no boxes, yeah. And was a blessed walking spade, fork, cooking stand, and uh all one of barbecue plates, you go in up low some one line request to have it, yes, we'll say okay, I've been too long, let's have put him on. Like and so also I put them more time unless I walk in the gym. Like most of no daily life living long blows and like say stop or send them unless I end him lyric money in them unless I stop them because I can't get the stop also. I must have all this now cooking stand. I'm like walking with like looking stuff like I must have like using all some blow material where you look in where some like you look in with some gas. Cylinders, some like you look in drum, some like you look in, you just cut him on all, all, all plates, you just cut him, you just square him, and you just walk him. You just walk him all the time. Also, something you don't look like camel here. You just buy him car, go look in the one block, you go buy him the hat, you just simple to look car, you just carry him house. Okay, carry him house, can the house you just walk him all the time. All products you don't look like no, and market you don't look like my life, you don't look in the camel, and you just put him the hat. And bless a salim. All sizes we get all known price blur. Bless a put it. All market blur. So we got all different prices. Now suppose I say one plus man or Mary and watch that. Like suppose I'm like buying one plus cooking stand, you or fork or spade. Like suppose I'm buying a car and go house. I'm buying stuff long plus time or say I must plus years or kind of say months number. History really look past it. Los la side mi se toca con los animales que full no reino cuando el sol tan reino con la sol olim no en ba yo lo como se me fake fake con en ba burkaria so yo le exhibí mi mas con la kitchen yo puse en la kitchen o yo cook outside yo mas se me se me yo cook pinis yo rosa me haces o que yo puse un arilo con la dry place so de sol no en ba yo se me con la dry na yo que las líneas na yo puse na yo cook cook tan solo na sol reino lo que me en ba burkaria so I can take him some block and or some years and I can work. So you like you see long block time and you can you say him or some by you see go yet. Kind of some more gas cylinder and we bless a walk in there. Um or rim block carrier and all this. And you can use a long block and you use some drum, you must careful, you must got kitchen straight. Well and by stain set. Now you can use him look cook, I know so. Because some thickness men or big la thick is half. Half a mil. So, gas cylinder, some blame two and a half, some blame three, or some blame thick and got strong. Now, it's like 
ואני אומר, יש לה רימי, הם סיקס, סיקס אנד הפ מיל, או שם לה פייב מיל, הם סטרונג, שם לה הם טרי אנד הפ, הם סטרונג, ואי גם יש לו מלטה. תראה, כל מיני כמה עושים, כל פלייס עם עודה, כל עושים, כל טוק, כמו כאילו שם דין. כל גימי בלס קץ, גימי בלס וואנה, גימי בלס וואנה, גימי בלס וואנה, פוטים סטרט, גימי בלס וואקים. גימי בלס וואקים, אקורדים לו, או לייקים, דיסיין לוגן, גימי בלס וואקים. זה הלב מול לווקים, לווקים מול שלכם, או פרודקס מול. כיסם נאמבר בלול קונטק וואנטם, תמיד מבלה פיניסים פיניסים, מבלה רינים מול כאן כסים. או לא כאן, לא כאן מבלה תאוקה, מבלה גיב לה צלחן פרייס. אז היו בהם האף, או מבלה כאן קומפליטים, אוקיי, אוקיי. היו כאן כסים האף, כאן לא, היו כאן מבלה קולים פיקים, כאן עושה דין בליגו. לא לוקס אפ, הם עושים, לייקים עוד שם לאול פרודקס, הוא העמיד לאווקים, ווקים עושים בבא גיב פלייט קוקינג סטיין, אול אבן, אול פוק, אול קרובס, לייקים הם עושים, אם לא כן גורן לו פייב מייל, סבי סטייסי, לו סייד לו גורנס, וואי וואי, כמה נתן לו ברוקו, וואי לא כל אסלו די וואי הם עושים, ניסה לי מול צלו סמטין, אול פרודקס טאפ סו. If you can come looking for the app, or you can contact the slide number. Contact Blomi, um, 7-16-12-44-9. I'm contact number Blomi. If you like one player, in, interested in the slide products, you can uh, ring him in the slide number. Thank you for joining me again on Quick Stitch. I'm Trisa from Last Corner Sales. This time on Quick Stitch, I'll be showing you how to make a car seat organizer. So this project is very easy to make and you can use it to organize stuff in your car. So let's see what we're gonna use for this project. So this project, you're gonna need strips. So as, it, as you can see, we, I've already cut out my strips. You can also use bias binding tape. Okay, this is two inches in width, so I've used, I've, we're gonna use four strips. And this floral fabric will be for the pockets. So this is six inches by 19 inch. And this piece is eight inches by 15 inch. Also, the main pieces are the Plain fabric, we're gonna use, these are uh, two pieces, one would be for the front and one for the back. So the first thing to do, we're gonna sew these straps in. This, would be, this will be for the straps of that, to hold it up on the car seat. Once we've done with the straps, we're gonna sew the bias binding strap onto the pocket, the edge of the top of the pocket. Folding over this piece, the edge in and then sew again.
So this is for the bottom pocket of the organizer. Okay, now we move on to the next pocket. So this pocket now. So we'll and the same thing we did here. We're gonna do on the other piece as well for the pocket. So for this piece, we're gonna, after we're done sewing this bit, we're gonna run the elastic, we're gonna run the elastic, elastic through this bit so that it will be, it will cause gathering in this piece. So this is what we've just done. Now we're gonna run, this is the longer piece of the longer piece that we're gonna use for the, um, the pockets. So we're gonna run elastic through so that it will be gathered and then it will fit onto the, the main piece. The piece that you've just sewn, you can thread it through using a safety pin. You can secure the elastic by stitching along the edge. Once we're done with that, we can move on to sewing the pockets onto the main piece. So this is one piece of the fabric. So we're gonna attach the shorter pocket on the bottom. But this is the wider pocket, so it will be at the bottom. This is the more narrow one, but it's longer, so it will be at the top. Okay, we can just sew along the to join the pocket onto the main piece. So for this piece, I've marked the center of this um, piece so that I'll stitch up this one to separate the pocket so that we have two separate pockets for this part. To attach the second piece, this is the longer piece. It's much longer than the main piece, so we will have to mark the center of this piece. Then we're gonna do a pleat, a, yep, a pleat in the center so that it will give a more bulky look to the pocket. So once you've taken the center of this you can measure two inches out because this is 19 and this is 15 inches we have four extra inches so we can take in two inches on this side to co to create the gather uh, to create the pleat and also two inches on that side we fold in so that it will be it will look more bulky the pocket so it will look something like this so now we can just pin, for now we can pin two inches in, pin on both sides and then sew along this to attach the, this piece onto the main fabric. Okay. We leave a six inch opening. So we're gonna use the opening to flip 
organize the right side out. And this is our simple car seat organizer. Join me again next time on Quick Stitch. Bye. And that was another sewing idea. Thanks to Teresa from Last Corner Sales for sharing your idea with us on the show. It's time for a breather. I'll see you on the other side. For this project, you will need a canvas painting which you can purchase at the shop or you can build one for yourself using leftover plywood at home. The next thing I am going to do is hammer the nail on the edges of the frame. Once that is done, I am going to run the fairy lights on the nails. Then I am going to put the paper clip. And there you have it, something simple you can decorate your home inside. LifeX is a trick that saves time and effort. This time on LifeX, I'll be showing you some hacks that you can do for your backend. Now, if you're tired of sprinkling water over your plants, this time I'll be showing you how you can make a simple DIY sprinkler. The main prop for this project is the container. You can choose any container size of your liking, but for this, I will use 500 ml container. Now, using the armor and the nail, I am going to make holes on the container. Make sure the lid of the container is closed so that it is easy to hammer the nail through the container. And then tape the container onto the hose and turn on the tap. you can see this water coming out through the container and it's sprinkled. Well viewers, we've come to the end of this week's show. If you want to know more about this episode or the talents that we've featured on the show, you can message our Facebook and Instagram page or you can simply contact us on the details showing on your screen now. And that's all the time we have for you this evening. Until then, pleasant viewing. Goodbye.